You may think it's all smoke and mirrors, but we've just come back from the lab. There is in fact a huge difference between grand and upright actions. Stick around for an action-packed video. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support and we love to interact with you. We have it. It's all about action. It's all about action today. I hope you guys enjoyed our silly little intro, but truly this is an action video and we're going to keep it pretty short and sweet. This is a common question that we get. What are the differences between grands and uprights? And of course, size of the instrument is one of the biggest things that we talk about immediately. Um, how the sound is produced, you know, it, when you have a grand piano, the lid's cracked up and the sound kind of, you know, fills the room both from uh, an upward position but also downward. Um, it really kind of fills the space. An upright sounds best against the wall where the sound is reflecting back. It actually, it's supposed to be about one or two feet off the wall, mm -hmm. which is really inconvenient. It's almost like it put it out in the middle of the room, sort of, so it bounces out. Yeah, and so, and so not talking specifically about those details today. Today we are talking about under the hood. Yeah, under the hood, there's differences, too. And Some of the biggest ones. Yeah, and you have to remember, too, that the ideal thing is that if you're serious about playing the piano, you're on a grand piano because that's how the instrument was originally designed and it kind of came to fruition. And so it's just a changeover from the harpsichord, and then there's all the different action components. Mm -hmm. And an upright presents a different problem. And the problem with an upright action is not just that the strings are vertical, but the action is vertical as well instead of being horizontal. When you're horizontal, everything works with gravity. Yeah, and so this is something we tell customers right, right away. It's like if you have space for a grand piano, there are some affordable grand pianos out there um, that really kind of will allow a player to progress and really kind of create a more dynamic instrument and experience with um, the piano. And so, uh, like you were saying, gravity plays a huge role in the difference. Um, and so, talk, show me real quick on, on the upright action, what's happening when a hammer strikes the string? When a hammer strikes a string on an upright action, it doesn't fall back entirely with gravity. It's spring-loaded, and most times it, at least in a minimum of one, if not two places. Mm -hmm. And that spring pushes back so that it has the same appeal as gravity does on, on, on a so, grand piano. On the grand piano, yeah, you're, you're, the hammer's coming up, striking, and then it's falling with gravity, um, a lot more of a smooth transition. It drops so you have faster repetition. Mm -hmm. uh, supposedly the repetition on a grand piano is, supposed, is like around twice what it is on, a, on an upright piano. Yeah, so you that would be the drum roll effect. Yeah, and so you have the, uh, the ability to really kind of be striking at a quicker pace, um, playing more intricate parts, right. um, and just a quicker, you know, especially in classical music and jazz, it's really important to be able to come off a note and re-strike it as soon as possible. Um, so that's one huge difference. The other is the key length. Mm -hmm. um, this grand piano action is probably anywhere from 30 to 40 percent longer on uh, the key length than the upright. And so that's that's sometimes hard for customers and for people looking for pianos to, to grasp because they see um, it's like looking at a, like a portable instrument. You see the white part of the key and that's about it. So on both on an upright and a grand, the actual key that you see with your eyes is just this it's white more part. More than doubled into the piano and on a grand piano, sometimes it's tripled or quadrupled. And so if you think about a tool, if you're using a tool with a pivot point, the longer the tool is, the more, you know, the leverage. more, yeah, more leverage and the more nuance you can have in striking. So you can really kind of create a more dynamic experience with a lighter touch, still striking the string or a heavier touch. You, you have just more dynamic expression, which right. is cool. Um, so yeah. The other things that affect the playing and the action on both pianos is, is how the pedals operate on the instrument as well. On mm -hmm. a grand piano, uh, your left pedal is the, uh, actually moves the keyboard to the right and it, and it shifts the hammer so that instead of hitting all three strings in the treble section, they're mostly hitting two. And it lowers the volume and it gives a timbral difference. Mm -hmm. Now on the upright piano, when you, when you press on the left pedal, it pushes the hammer closer so that it doesn't move as fast and it's not hitting as hard, but there's no tonal difference, just a volume change. Mm -hmm. And then the middle pedal 
on an upright piano and a grand piano, they function differently. On a grand piano, it's usually going to be a sustenuto pedal. On an upright piano, it's probably going to be, in this day and age, a practice mute pedal. And other times, it could have been a bass sustain pedal. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times, it's just a... Uh, um, in old times, I used to have like little metal things that would come in too. Uh, and then of course the the um, the damper sustains are different as well because on a, on an upright piano they're vertical and on a grand piano they're actually horizontal again using gravity and uh, the key to, to drop it back down where is it spring loaded on. on yeah, so so some really you know unique differences between a granite and upright. Um, and some people, you know, don't have space for a grand piano, and that's okay. And and uh, a lot of the times, people, um, you know, they'll say, "Well, is it that big of a deal? Like, can I learn on an up? Can I still play great on an upright?" And there's some fantastic uprights out there that some of them have the sustenuto pedal in the middle. Um, some of them are very large, like the K800 that we've reviewed here on this channel. Um, but they're 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 incredible instruments, and they still have a lot of value in the length of the key versus a digital Correct. instrument. Um, and so we did want to just mention digital pianos and the versatility of, of the action on those. So we brought a couple here, um, and uh, basically on some of the less expensive digitals, you see a very small key length here. Um, where the action is is uh, is built underneath the key, and they're trying to simulate, of course, what's happening either in an upright or in a grand instrument. On the more expensive up or more expensive digital instruments, they you actually grand feel. And what I like about this is that when you look at it, you can actually see the key length. It is a longer key length. It is a wooden key. But what's nice about it is you can actually see. I don't know how many numerous times they had to go through to narrow this invention down to what it is, but it's really like a sim simplistic offtake on the harpsichord action mm -hmm. with all the nuances of a piano hammer action being incorporated in it. So it does have the key lifts the hammer, the hammer goes up and it does fall back and it is weighted and it's absolutely kind of a, a very simplistic, but you can tell they went through a lot of different yeah. design features to and, get and to And you that. see the, the key button on this one as well. It's far, it's far as far back in the key as they really can make it. Um, the key button is that pivot point um, right. in the action. So they are trying to create these and simulate uh, grand and, and uh, upright actions with the use of technology. So it's pretty cool. Um, and so really, those are really the big differences between grand and upright actions. Uh, really just wanted to touch on that in this video and say, hey, when you're looking, make sure you're considering the feel of the instrument and some of the benefits that sometimes you get moving up to a grand piano. Sometimes people look for use, they're comparing a used grand to a, a new upright because the prices can be very similar. Very similar um, and so just keep this in mind when looking, there's a, a big difference in the actions. If you guys have opinions, if you've played a, a grand if you, for a long time and played an upright for a long time and um, have felt the differences, please leave some comments. I know a lot of people have questions about this. Um, and it's really, it's really interesting to hear other people's, uh, you know, how they feel the differences because a lot of this is a subjective experience. But you lift up the hood, you look inside, you see the actual physical differences, right. and it starts making a lot more sense to you. Um, well, thank you guys for watching. This is Ted Barshalou. I'm Patrick Marr with Alamo Music. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. We have stores in San Antonio, Austin. We have one in St. Louis. We have one in Kansas City. Please come visit us. Say hi. We'd love to see you guys.